will start with the first paper now. The first paper of the IC Less 24. So the paper is Word Sense Alignment of Sanskrit Lexica by Dhaval Patel and Ambakul Karni. So they are from University of Hyderabad. So I'll invite Dhaval to start pre presenting the paper. Am I audible? Okay. So, request you to please load the presentation. So till they uh, load the presentation, the talk would be on word sense alignment in Sanskrit lexica. Uh, the paper reads word sense alignment in Sanskrit lexica. Uh, thank you. Uh, next, please. So usually when we align lexical resources, we do it, we may do it on two levels. One is word level, which is the head word level. Let us say I align a dictionary on hurry, hurry, hurry in one, hurry in two. The second is you align, let's say, 10 senses of hurry on one side and the 10 senses or 11 senses, whatever has been uh, uh, decided by the lexicographer on the other. So uh, the first sense, uh, first way we align very frequently, so I'll not go into it. The second way is when you align a dictionary or a lexical resource at word sense level. So uh, what are the use cases and what are the uh, 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 things which we foresee in future? Right. Uh, so let us say if you have a text which has been disambiguated by word sense disambiguation program or manually or something. So you have assigned a specific word sense to a particular word in the occurrence of the text. In that case, uh, the user can be shown only the senses which are related to that particular meaning and not clutter him with 10 meanings of each word on every dictionary. So one portion is word sense disambiguation techniques which have generated word, word sense disambiguated corpora. This can be a good uh, supplement to those uh, word sense uh, disambiguated corpora. The second is when you have uh, kind of identified that this word is mean, uh, used in this meaning in th this context. In that case, uh, models trained with high uh, resources or uh, let's say English or other, uh, other languages which have a uh, higher resource base than uh, Sanskrit, let us say. So they can be ported with the help of the lexica. You can use the lexica as a bridging grip between, uh, bridge, a bridge between two uh, models. So uh, aim of the study, it is to arrive an algorithm uh, which allows the word sense mapping between two lexica with some confidence score so that the uh, human annotator can spend more of his time on the places where we know beforehand that there is a high, likely of, high likelihood of being wrong, rather than spending the time on the very obvious things. Next, it's not moving, I think. Okay, so just to give you an example, this is a dictionary, it's Apte Sanskrit Hindi dictionary. Uh, there are three meanings given for the word Akalpaha. Next. This is Apte Sanskrit English Dictionary, the 1890 version, in which four senses have been given for the same word. So, uh, okay. So, if a human annotator was to kind of connect these two, he would do something like this. The Hindi senses would be mapped with English senses and whatever senses are not mapped, they'll be kind of kept blank. So this is how, this is what the expected mapping is. Right. So uh, how, uh, let me tell you beforehand, before I venture further, uh, to identify similarity score between two texts, you have uh, two, three, two, three modalities. So one is uh, the modality which is text-based. The second is graph-based. The third is you have something semantic analysis or LSA on ESE, something on the machine learning side. So what we are talking about in this paper is purely a textual one. We have not ventured into graph-based or uh, 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 semantic analysis part of it. 
so what what was done was we pre process the dictionaries and when i say pre processing it would mean removal of obvious errors or removal of extra punctuation or markup errors etc then a small 1000 uh, entry uh, data set was prepared dictionary 1 dictionary 2 they were manually mapped so that you can check the performance of the algorithms which you are testing against that gold standard so uh, this is a very small kind of data set which was prepared and then various algorithms text based it's, uh, it's uh, text textual similarity based algorithms were uh, run to find out similarity score between two entries and uh, when we ran this algorithm or uh, when we ran different algorithms uh, on this this data set whatever gave the best result was extrapolated to the full work so aapke sanskrit hindi full dictionary okay uh, so when you want to do uh, mapping between two text two two entries in that case you'll have to have some sense of sanity by uh, when i say some sense of sanity i mean that the destination language should be similar let us say if i a kind of map uh, if i ask computer to map an english meaning with a hindi meaning with no training in between then it would find a bit difficult so what we have done is we have used a very easily available google translate translated the english definition into hindi and hindi definition to english so you precisely have four sets let's say so you have you have this two items in english and this two items in hindi so this were uh, this were then english was map it was tried english was tried with english uh, hindi was tried with hindi it was uh, the mapping was tried that way so then you get something of this sort you have uh, similarity scores let's say uh, this 247 was compared with four entries of english so this got the highest uh, value this got the highest value this got the highest value so you know something uh, uh, this are this similarity scores are calculated i'll come to the uh, numbers they are very easy matrices so uh, this calculation would give me some idea that this has to be mapped with this this has to be mapped with this this has to be mapped with this this is with dictionary all both the dictionaries with hindi as the destination language the language can be any let me be very clear this is a language uh, hindi has been used because one of the dictionary was in hindi and one was in english but any language which is supported by google translate may be used so uh, when i uh, uh, when i mentioned that this sanskrit lexica word sense alignment is slightly a misnomer uh, it can be applied to any language pairs uh, in which you want to uh, align the lexical resources similarly this was with the english uh, language as the destination language for both so then also you have something let's say this has to be mapped with this uh, here you do not get a good match here you get a good match so this is how you uh, we kind of calculated the similarity scores okay right so uh, to keep uh, the words are let's say you have two word list an entry is a word list you have a long word list of let's say 10 words 20 words so uh, capital l1 is word in def list of words the l2 is list of words in the second definition which you want to compare small l1 small l2 they are unique words so you can say in computational language these are these two are lists these two are sets unique sets right so these are the simple measures mostly they are jacquard coefficients so you have uh, intersection divided by union of list intersection divided by uh, union of unique uh, so these are the jacquard coefficients uh, in these two cases and these two are uh, uh, the first enter the first dictionary the number of words in the first dictionary when we use modulus it means they are the numbers of so you will get a score which would be common words in these two dictionaries or above our total words in these two dictionaries common unique words divided by com uh, uh, total unique words in the dictionaries common words divided by any of the dictionaries uh, common uh, uh, common unique words divided by any of the dictionaries then we also tried with shingles shingles are nothing but n grams of different uh, numbers let's say if i apply shingles to space then you have s sp spa ad infinitum whatever is the uh, n grams which you can generate with this particular word 1 gram 2 gram 3 gram whatever is the length of the word okay so right 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 so usually uh, 
Hindi language and many other languages, they do have this tendency of applying a case marker at the end. So, Bahra, Bahre, everything would be, well, you, you are referring to the same object, but you are using different case markers in the definitions. So, we tried removing those case markers and see if there were any uh, material differences between the mappings which are found. So, a total of, uh, this is the word, shingle, trimmed word, syllable level mapping was done and M1, M2, M3, M4, which were earlier uh, mentioned. So this, this, were, this way a simple table of 16 algorithms was tried. So uh, this is what you get you, uh, when we apply. So it's more or less because they are from the same author. Uh, 90, uh, CR606 uh, gave us the best results. When I also tried with other dictionaries or other player players, this is the uh, algorithm which gave the best uh, similarity score or uh, which gave the most uh, pairs identified out of the given data set. So that is intersection divided up by union of set applied to shingles. So shingles may be taking care of those case markers, prefixes, suffixes, something of that sort. I don't know the reason, but the reason may be because they are taking care of the uh, uh, case markers and other things. Okay. So uh, let's say we, uh, as I showed, we got two kinds of uh, uh, we compared it with two destination language. One was with Hindi, the other was with English. That gave us an additional instrument to work out our confidence level. The similarity scores were always there. But let us say if a, a mapping gets the same mapping in Hindi as the destination language and also the same mapping with English as the destination language, it would increase our confidence more that our mapping which is generated by the computer is more robust. So that way is uh, taking this two into consideration. So this category A is both languages have above similarity threshold and both languages give the same first bet. So these are very high confidence uh, intervals in which human annotator may not need to spend his time. Similarly, uh, the category B is one of the language gives above similarity threshold and the second language gives below similarity threshold. But one of them is giving a good uh, similarity score. So here also the confidence interval is high. The third is head word is present only in one dictionary and absent in other dictionaries. It may happen because some of the dictionaries are more fine grained. Some of the dictionaries are uh, not so. Some of them have uh, kind of compounds not very well parsed. So you have many head words which are present in one dictionary and absent in other dictionary. You cannot do much because they'll be anyhow uh, different. Then category D and E, they are the problematic uh, places where uh, the confidence interval is very low. Let us say uh, D is both languages have uh, give us uh, below similarity threshold and uh, both are giving the same. The E is in which one of both are below the similarity threshold, uh, but both are giving different ones. Uh, F is head word is present in both dictionaries, but all the entries of dictionary one have already been assigned to other entries of dictionary two and hence there is no mapping. So it would give a blank mapping. And G is forced map. Let's say if you have three entries in dictionary one, three entries in dictionary two, two of them have been mapped very confidently. The third one is the only one remaining on either side. So these are forced map entries. So this also, this uh, e, F and G categories would also be relatively fine. The issues which we should, or a human annotator would need to spend more time is in this D and E categories because the computer does not have any confidence whatsoever. Okay, so just to give you how it was generated, so these uh, scores were, uh, the similarity scores were shown. 247 was mapped with one, one language as destination, it was mapped with 440. With the other language, it was mapped with 440. So I know that this is a good map, so I have kept it in A. Similarly, uh, here, uh, the, the uh, we have kept, artificially we have kept the threshold as 0.2. So 20% of mapping, the uh, shingles are mapping. So this is below threshold, this is below threshold. Uh, the, therefore, this is in E and here uh, the, uh, both are mapping to the same one, so it is A. So this is how it was generated. The, you, the data of both the, the languages as destination has helped us to kind of uh, restrict our numbers to a reasonable number. So uh, when the uh, earlier I showed regarding the uh, gold standard data, this is the data uh, which, uh, of different categories which are in the, uh, let's say if we look at this D and E categories, when it, it is applied to after Sanskrit Hindi and Sanskrit English full dictionaries, it comes somewhere around 10%. So let us say if you have two like uh, word senses to map, you will be need, you'll need to focus mostly on those 20,000 words which are in this list. 
so we can reduce the human labor by almost a factor of 10. So 10% inter entries would be in that D or E category, which may uh, improve with the human intervention. The rest 90% can be mapped. I'm not saying there would not be errors in those cases, but yes, there, the errors would be less compared to the uh, uh, this 10% entries in which we have very low confidence interval. So similarly, uh, just to check whether the numbers do vary according to the change of the dictionaries or not, I, I tried with uh, different uh, dictionary pairs. One is after Sanskrit in English and after uh, and Monier Williams. These are two mostly used Sanskrit dictionaries, uh, Sanskrit English dictionaries, so to say. So, uh, but yes, we they have a large number of gap between the word senses which are captured. So you have around 133 and here uh, 287. Okay, similar, uh, oh, just, right. So Wilson and Yates, uh, they are the earliest, uh, oldest Sanskrit dictionaries on the Western patterns. So they are more or less, they have roughly the same coverage. Uh, they were, the mapping between them was also tried. And just to see whether it works across other other languages, let us say English, English. So Webster, uh, it went. okay. So WordNet and Webster, these two openly available dictionaries were there. So we, uh, we tried with those two uh, also. Uh, this These do have some peculiarities. WordNet is, the word number is less. Uh, the senses are very fine-grained. Webster, because it's a, a kind of longish, uh, typical and English dictionary, so words are manifold high than the uh, uh, numbers in web, uh, WordNet. So here also, uh, let's say after Monier Williams, we get around 10, 11 percent in this uh, D and D categories. Uh, Wilson would be 12 percent, 12, 12.5. This would be 12 percent. So uh, in other dictionary pairs also, roughly you get uh, human labor, which is almost 10 percent of the word census to be mapped. So when we see in absolute term, the task seems daunting. Let's say if you say that you have to map entries map karni hai you want to uh, say something of that sort, then it, it's quite a hard break. It would be very uh, long and resource consuming. But when you say 10,000, 20,000, you want to do 10,000, 20,000, then I think it's a fairly kind of uh, within human reach. So uh, just to facilitate the correction submission, a front end has also been created so that uh, whatever information which was earlier showed, would be all would be shown to the human annotator and he would be highlighted that this is the map in which the computer has a low confidence so he can spend his time he can submit the corrections the corrections would be stored in the backend and then uh, that would be tagged as human manually annotated data so uh, someone uh, whenever he wants to undertake a project to align these dictionaries so that can be uh, well so something of this sort let's say uh, 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 you have uh, dictionary one here, dictionary two here. If it is correct, you can submit. If it is not correct, you can edit and you can submit. So this is regarding the front end uh, submission for the same. So I think this is what I had to say regarding what we have done. And the way forward would be, there would be a few cases in which graph based uh, algorithms may work better. Uh, let us say uh, a word has Saras uh, and a, a, a meaning has bird. So if you have a graph based structure, let's say Sanskrit word net, he may be able to traverse. The otherwise, Bird and Saras would not be able to give you a good similarity score based on uh, the words, the text itself. But yes, if you have a, uh, if you use word net ontology, you may be able to go from Saras to Bird and Bird to that uh, word entry. The uh, so latent semantic analysis, explicit semantic analysis, we have not tried because of the computational uh, restrictions and uh, it, it would be a very daunting task to compare uh, on this aspect. So if that can be taken up, they may also give some more idea. As I said, we had uh, arbitrarily or not arbitrarily, but 20% or two point, the threshold score was calculated. Uh, it was kept empirically at uh, a point two. But you can do a statistical calculation, uh, which would say, let's say, if you want to maximize F score, uh, you you can tweak the parameters that similarity score if it is kept at 15 what you are getting if you are kept, if it's kept 30 what you are getting so that can be done and uh, we can test with other language pairs to decide whether the choice of destination uh, this was done with Hindi and English as destination language in mind because of our 
inability to understand the mappings in other let's say if it had been german i would not be able to understand whether the mapping is correct or not so if uh, other destination uh, languages can be tried it can be seen that the mappings are nice or they are generated well then we can see whether the choice of destination language has any bearing on the uh, performance or not and uh, yes this is this would be a project let's say if you want to align apte and uh, monier williams if you want to align two dictionary let's say amar kosh uh, vaijayanti whatever you want to align you can take and uh, kind of create this uh, uh, machine generated mapping and then quickly modify whatever you think is not working for you or whatever is not giving a good uh, result so so that's it so thank you right sir sir arna sir okay so very nice talk one question this so threshold of 0.2 was kept for all the algorithms it was kept point to for all the algorithms okay so because this intersection by union hmm. versus intersection by this number i mean maybe, maybe you can okay number that so that's number one question more importantly that uh, um, that setting g that you were showing that it was mapped to something remaining right so did you use this mapping algorithm to uh, so it, so does one sense go to only one other sense or it cannot go to two no, senses no no uh, it was something like this uh see uh, uh there can be one to one one to many many to one everything was possible let's say uh, and and uh, a b c 3 were there here also g happened only in, only in cases in which the numbers on the uh, numbers of senses on one side and the number of senses on the other side they were precisely the same let's say it all it enlisted three this enlisted three two of them were mapped very com confidently with let's say a or b uh, something of that sort so in that case the third entry which was remaining it was sports map with the third entry which was remaining maybe may it may be uh, let's say this would not have a map on this side and this may not have a map on this side it's quite possible yeah so it's so quite then, possible okay so the force mapping can be because then ha right right so uh, if the dictionary show a very peculiar tendency of many to one mapping or one to many mapping then in that case yes g may have an issue so okay. that uh, that is the uh, valid one okay thank you yeah. Dhaval, is it possible to find out which dictionary is copy, which dictionary is like based on this amount of meanings, order of meanings? Can it be used to find out who copies who? Like I don't know, Monia Williams Birdling, or uh, how independent is Apte? Can we use it for like this research of uh, plagiarism, maybe even in Sanskrit lexicography? <laughs> I I I would not say plagiarism because dictionary meanings are usually copied down the generation. So uh, uh, Amar Kosh has given something, then Abhinand Chintamani would not do something which is de novo. He, he would add two meanings, he would delete one. So yes, but uh, similarity scores would be there in case you want to venture into something of that sort. Then you will be able to get the details of the five meanings in Apte, five meanings in Monier Williams, or ten meanings in Monier Williams. whether they were verbatim copied whether they were copied uh, uh, with some uh, change in context yes but similarity scores would be there you can judge on your own thanks there are some questions okay uh, thank you for the presentation uh, dhawal uh, i have one basic uh, question to understand uh, do you think all the entries in the apte has multiple meanings for the uh, entries no there are many meanings where there would be mono uh, let's say mono semi poly semi mono semi oh. so there would be monosemous meanings also okay so. and also how to how uh, this particular system handles uh, some of the examples like a uh, few days ago i was looking at the apte dictionary for a particular word kuddala and it was uh, redirecting me to kuddara hmm. and the meaning were same so right. how to how uh, this particular algorithms okay so uh, when when i talk about uh, when i talked about pre processing pre processing would uh, kind of take care of only one or two minor things one would be let's say quotations would be kept out of it what we are looking for is uh, the meaning part of it and not the citations so the citations uh, were removed from the text 
the second aspect which was done in pre-processing was a uh, markup errors if there existed any because I took data from Cologne. So there may be some markup exceptions which were not kind of creating. Uh, other than that, th th there are many cases in the, uh, so the numbers which are being shown here in which I have not uh, uh, tried to analyze or try to decipher C entry number this, C under this. So something, uh, uh, this is how dictionaries are encoded, but yes, that data is not there. So you won't have a textual data there. So uh, they would be giving false uh, positive, false negatives. But yes, that if they are passed properly, if you have a word uh, and its meaning in, let's say, a TSV file properly formatted, in that case, such kind of issues would not be there. But yes, because we are taking data from Cologne, we are having cases in which C or let's say if the verbs are there, uh, C under uh, root, so you have all sorts of those, so those idiosyncrasies are not handled because I just wanted that it should be replicated. It, it should be able to be replicated. Then I've not done anything manually. So whatever data was there in which the data was C under, it's C under, right? Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Dictionaries. Uh, of course, it's very hard to align dictionaries that have, don't have the same granularity. Hmm. But if they have the same granularity, you still have, uh, have other problems. Like the, the authors of the dictionary may not have the same idea about homonymy and polysemy. Okay, so you can see that in, between Apte and Monier Williams, for instance. Oh. There are cases where you have two entries in Monier Williams and only one in Apte for the same word. How okay. do you deal with that? Okay, so what I have done, as I, as I said, what was done was headword meaning, headword meaning. So in that case, polysemy or homonymy would be treated at par. It would not have any difference whatsoever because uh, what we are using is the headword and meaning. So uh, homonymies would also be uh, split like that. Polysemies would also be split like that. So uh, that way you have, let's say if you have a word which is uh, homonymous, you have two entries in after you will have one entry meaning one, one the second entry meaning two. In uh, Monier Williams, you have the uh, single entry and you have two meanings there, but the, it would be split at meaning level. So homonymy and polysemy, I don't think would have any bearing in the calculation of uh, similarities. If they handle it separately, because uh, I, I don't think there is any difference. So uh, yes, uh, linguistically, there would be a difference, but for computational part of it, it's only the headword and the text of the meaning, which is supplied. So uh, had it been in homonymy parts or had it been in a polysemy, a separate entry, it would have the same. So how do you assign the headword for a particular word or a word sense? Uh, what we are talking about in this particular scenario is uh, dictionaries which are modeled on the Western model of headword meaning, not not the koshas which are arranged in uh, samanarthak and nanarthak. So these are precise. These are the same can be extended. The same logic can be extended. But the present comparisons which happened, they are the headword is already pre-specified. The word is already given. Hari is given, and you have ten meanings of hari. So we are trying to identify which meaning of hurry in dictionary one maps with the uh, which number of meaning in dictionary two so that I can show only the relevant portion. So yes, uh, headword decipherry, uh, deciphering the headword is not a task in this case. It is given. So uh, you're saying that hurry for hurry, the headword is hurry. Hurry. Okay. So, so it's, it's a pratipadik. It, it's pratipadik. Pratipadik or uh, that is dhatu or nama root. That is the, that is the, not, not something in which the case markers are applied. Some explanation is needed here. See, some dictionaries give Prathamanta as the head word, and some dictionaries give uh, the Pratipadika as the head word. How you have handled okay. it? This, uh, I think yes, yes, the... ma'am, I understood the issue. The, uh, let us say, Apte has the tendency of giving Prathamanta, Kamal, Kamalam, Kamalaha, Sarasaha, something of that sort. Uh, and other dictionaries have sarasa. So in uh, Cologne dictionaries, uh, we have something known as headword normalization. So they have normalized the headwords. All of them have been brought to the level of uh, uh, Pratipadika. So you know precisely that uh, after 90, 
has Kamal Lahar, but you should read it as Kamal. So that data is taken from colon and used so that they are mapped. So let's say Kamalam, Kamal Lahar, different uh, numbers. So that, that's how it is handled. If Prathmant ones, sometimes some, some dictionaries have done Pita, some of them have given Pitru. So that happens. But that has been taken care of uh, by this logic. Okay, so there were many, many interesting discussions. So for the, in the interest of time, I think other questions can be done during the lunch time, yeah, lunch break. So let's thank Tamaji again for this very interesting talk. Also, yeah, this reminded me of our initial efforts in aligning Heritage and Monia Williams that we did in 2012. 2012.